All right. So last week I shared my full part from the ARC movie. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet, it'll be linked up right here. Um, if you did, thanks for checking it out. So a lot of the time we get asked questions, you know, like, what was that trick like? What was that jump like? Tell some stories behind the scenes. Like these video parts are basically highlight reels, so we don't get to share that information too much. I'm gonna to take today to go a little bit in depth into this video part and hopefully share some information and insights that you would normally see. Before I take off with this, uh, I should say Gabe Langlois was our filmer. He's an incredible talent. I mean, he's worked on a lot of the Travis Rice projects, so he did like Art of Flight and Fourth Phase, I'm pretty sure. Like his resume of, of movies that he's been either a filmer, a cinematographer on, or being an editor, uh, it's just incredible. So anyways, big shout out to him because he filmed and edited most of my part. So really stoked to have him on. Um, all right, let's get this going. Oh, right off the bat, these close-up shots, they're so hard to do. We spent an entire day doing these, basically looking for moments, because Gabe's snowboarding with us, so we're both riding down the slope together. He's carrying his red cam, and he has such a tight focal range on that camera. So, you know, if we're, let's say, three or four feet away, that's that's what's in focus. Anything beyond that or before that, you're, you're nothing's in focus. The shot's kind of pointless. So all this, like, I have such an appreciation for the work that went in behind it. And it just looks so cool. It's so unique in, in my kind of point of view, you know. The bomb. Oh man, I'll go back to that one. So these, these are so fun to do. They're basically just like a hockey stop. So snow sprays like crazy and then you kind of come through it. Um, the photographer that day, forget who we had, but he was comparing it to uh, the one of the James Bond movies intro where he's like riding down the slope and there's bombs going off and people trying to shoot at him And it's funny every time I see this that's all I think about now is that intro really funny comparison But they're fun to do but they're pretty hard to get like with good style so This air through the tree shot. I love these so much. Um, this is a good example of when we go out filming, a lot of the time we have a vision of what we want to do. You know, if we see a spot and we see a trick that we want to do, it's not just like, hey, I want to go and do a trick on this. You know, it's like we can kind of start to picture how Gabe and the cinematographers will, will capture it and, and what this shot is going to look like in the end. And this turned out even better than I expected. You know, I had this exact vision, but just the way Gabe got it with that orange jacket too, it's like such tight focus. You can see like everything's blurred out behind it. That little bit of snow that kind of like pops right, right there. Like, anyways, it was just so rad, but this is where it gets annoying. You can see that was like such a jarring landing. So you only get like one kind of shot at those, right? One or two. You can't, like if you go and you mess up, you're jumping into a hole basically. And what happened was my first go through, I came too short and there's the backside of a pillow. So I just like clapped it. And then I went to try again. Obviously I can't go to the right or left cause you're going through a little narrow spot. So I ended up landing basically like right in that. And it was rock solid. Like I could feel it like all the way down. Like you can see me impact and just like the rest of that trip, I just felt sore from it. Just from something like that. Well, this backside 180 was fun. So there's actually, I'll, I'll talk about this backside 180 quickly. Let's go back to that. Um, this day was pretty wild. So we knew there was some avalanche problems that were persisting in that area. We wanted to go to somewhere that was super safe. Like you can see the landing super flat as well. So we didn't have any dangers. We felt very comfortable with what we were doing. Um, there was a bunch of other people in the zone as well though. There's another crew that was maybe a kilometer away. They knew about the danger as well. They went on onto a slope and just to check it out, they dug a pit, they rode down next to it and 
it propagated like actually it set off like a meter crown right next to where they were and then propagated all the way across like 200 meter slope and it just basically like shut everyone down. Everyone after that point, apparently they were just like, okay, we're not snowboarding anymore today. This is like, it's way too dangerous. Let's just go and be safe. And so what they did, they actually came back and ended up watching us ride. So not only that, we had some snowmobilers come up as well and just like watch us. This session is like, it looks like we're in the middle of nowhere. It looks like so peaceful, but there's actually probably like 20 people that were right down by that ride out that were just like, cheering us you know yelling heckling like ch small talking with us like there was it felt like we were at the park like it wasn't this like backcountry kind of like quiet thing that you know usually you have like f your five people on your crew it definitely was a very interesting session having to focus on your riding but then coming down and, and small talking with people while you wait for your pickup uh, it was a really fun day, so I'm glad everyone was safe and we were all doing things right, but it, uh, it, it definitely was like a weird vibe for a backcountry jump. I don't, I gotta stop doing these. I just, I, I'm in love with this one shot that Craig Kelly has. He, well, he's got a bunch of amazing shots, but I have this one vision of this Craig Kelly shots where he has this like, again, like this massive cloud that comes up that he comes through and he's just riding. It's like, it's such a beautiful feeling when I watch it that I'm like, oh, I wanna do something like that. But I mean, I don't have the style like Craig. I can't ride like him. It's never gonna be what Craig did on a snowboard. this jump oh my goodness okay so you know what I think I'm actually gonna make a whole other video on this we have a ton of footage of trying to make this work this is one of those moments where you know aesthetically an area looks like it should be perfect like we have a pillow where we can have this jump it drops down over this gap and then a knuckle comes up and a landing like by all means like you roll up on that spot and it looks like it should be perfect and then we start building it and one problem happens and another problem happens. This was just one of those where we were forcing it, trying to play into that aesthetic, like how good this jump looks, but it just did not want to work. I think I need to do another video on this because it, it didn't work and we kept trying to make it work. That was a really cool spot. Mikey Cicerelli actually found that spot, um, which was cool because I think this year, that year probably would have been his first or second year that he switched from being a full-time contest rider to a backcountry rider. So for him to pick out a jump and have it work with like the limited experience that he had was pretty awesome to see. I mean, he's such a quick learner. So it was cool having him like come up and be like, hey, like I think I found a jump, let's go check it out. Sure enough, like the in run was a bit sketchy. We had like a bump that we had to go over before the lip. So you're basically like catching air and then landing and going off it. But like, it's a great jump. And I'm like really stoked on how far he's come and how fast he learns in the backcountry that he can start picking out things like this and have them work. That's something that a lot of people don't understand is, is like it takes a long time to have the experience to be able to spot features and spot things that actually work like things can can look good but it's super flat landing or it's in an area that always gets wind or like not even that you could pick a good spot and then build it completely wrong so there's a lot of things that go into it that experience is like very beneficial and this was really cool seeing mikey kind of thrive on his own This zone so much this is one of my favorite zones a lot of, like it doesn't get a lot of wind it's like protected in this like great little bowl it has amazing afternoon light so it's just like it's such this nice little like mini shred zone like it looks so much like tahoe actually now that i think about it i had so much fun riding here you can see like three little features on this there's not a ton of things to do mikey Rens rode something up to the right actually one thing we had this day rusty ockenden was with us 
and he was filming for, uh, I forget which Man Boys project it was, but uh, he's got another angle of this kind of slash right here, slash the front side grab, and it looks so cool. It's probably one of my favorite shots I've gotten in recent years, just because it has like such a good feeling to it. So that was, that was really neat. I love this zone so much. happy that worked okay so I'll, I'll talk about this because something that you definitely don't see in this was originally there I was just gonna drop in from right here basically drop onto that little ridge and then and then off the cliff but like this spine here on the right hand side like those look so nice they were just glowing in the light so I was like hey I can I can do a little bit more here and I can ride into it hopefully like purposely toe edge and kick some snow over that so that there's a slough coming down it should kind of glow as it comes over those spines what you can't see here is that that entire face is south facing so it's just been getting sun like radiated on it it's like icy but slushy at the same time it's grabby it's chunky like you might be able to kind of see when i first kick it how like chunky all that snow is anyways so <laughs> It barely worked. I hooked that left hand corner to get onto this drop and then this rib here was basically that same snow. So it kind of put me into a track straight for that cliff. I didn't really get a good chance of like ditching speed because when it's firm like that you kind of get stuck in your way and then you're just off the jump. So I ended up carrying more speed than I thought off this. It just worked. I mean like that's as far as I could probably go on it. If I went any further, I think that'd be too much. Like you can see just that compression in there. But yeah, that, I'm very happy it worked. That's what's so fun about this. You get one, maybe two tries at a lot of this stuff. And if it doesn't work, you have to either come back or you just write it off as just kind of, oh, like, whoops. And then you, you move on to something else. Oh, that's, that's it. And then that's, uh, that's Mikkel's part right there. Uh, Mikkel and Mikey Renz would be up next in that video. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Danny Davis, for putting that movie all together and everyone that worked on it. That was a super fun year. And um, there's honestly a lot of good movies coming out right now. So go and watch some snowboarding. Check it out. There's, there's every year so many kids and so many crews produce such great stuff. So. Have a look online. Maybe I'll see if I can find a way to uh, direct y'all to some of the some of the top movies that are out right now. But um, thanks for joining this week, and we'll see you soon.